So we are going to go over how Brandon's computer works and I'm going to do it before I do a video of Brandon using his computer so that you get the, the idea of what runs his computer and how he's currently using it. Now he uses his own laptop, this is his and you know because it's in the classroom and then he has his own keyboard. Now Brandon does not touch type because he doesn't have the coordination so he has to search for the buttons w with the braille and people always ask me why isn't he using Dragon or some speech program and it's because the speech programs won't recognize his speech because he isn't able to enunciate words well enough for them to be able to understand it. So that's why when he writes, he just searches for the Braille and uh, types. It is a little slower, but um, it, it works for him. Um, the other thing that people ask me is why is he not brailing on a Perkins Brailler? It's the same reason that he's not um, t typing, touch typing, because he doesn't have the coordination to be able to use like three fingers at one time to create the combinations needed to be able to create the braille cell. So that's just a basic overview of why he is using this keyboard with the braille on it and not touch typing and not using his voice. Okay, so he can go get his own computer most of the time. Um, the computer sits right by his desk, as you know, and so if he wants to use it at his desk, he can go get his own computer and his own keyboard. If he's rotating from center to center, we decided that um, a para is going to carry it because it's too difficult for him to carry all of it at the same time and get there on time with his cane. So, um, and the other time that we carry it is when I take it down to the vocational room. I'm, I carry it too, or it would just be too difficult for him to have to carry it all the way down there. So, let's say Brandon is going to use the computer at his desk for free time or break time or or you know whatever you want what, whatever you want to call those times where um, he has open times he goes and gets the laptop you know he would take out the uh, charge cord but for right now I'm going to leave it in because I want, I want it to stay charged um, he would open up his computer and in the morning when he comes in is when you turn it on hopefully it stays on all day so he would turn it on and he'll wait um, for it to load. And while he's waiting for it to load, he knows what to listen for. And while that's happening, he gets his keyboard. And he knows that up in the right hand corner, you turn it on. If it's not connecting and it's not, and he's not getting any response, he knows he hasn't turned it on. So it's, it shows green in the button when it's on. So then he waits for the sound and there's more than one sound and he knows what to listen for for when it's time to log on. It's not that sound and he knows that. Now while we're waiting for the correct sound, I'm going to tell you his password is right here. He knows how to read it. Um, he has it memorized but every once in a while if he hasn't logged in for a while himself he'll forget it but it's here so he can check it. It's also here in print for staff members working with him. It's the Hawks semicolon 2017. And then his, his ID is his username. So you can put that in, or actually not you, he can put that in when he logs in. Sometimes if you need to go in and do something on his account, okay, he knows that he's going to hear that, but it's not time yet. There's another sound. Um, where was I? Oh, if you need to do some work in his account, you can go ahead and use his information to log in if you need to. You can use this computer. Okay, Windows log on, log on frame. He knows that it's time to push Control Alt Delete. He knows where those keys are. Control Alt Delete. Okay, he knows that he can either push the space bar or enter, and it's going to open up. The, um, the 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 login boxes. So he when he hears other user username, he knows that um, it's time to go ahead and put in his ID number, which is one. Okay, and then he knows to push tab. He 
her password. He knows that the cursor is in the password box for him to type his password. So it's... He hates it that it says star, and actually I do too. I wish it would say what he's typing, but because it's a password, um, JAWS is set up to read only what the screen sees, which is a star or a dot. Okay, so this what you're hearing is called JAWS, and it is the platform that runs the Windows program. Um, when you put JAWS onto a computer, it actually changes the platform for a blind user. So it has, there's so many different components to it, I can't tell you everything, but there's three cursors in the system and they run between each other. One's a PC cursor, one's a JAWS cursor, and one's a virtual cursor. If those cursors get messed up and they end up in different places, things won't type correctly. Like if you start typing, it's not gonna, it's not gonna type. Um, it'll just, get confused and you're going to be confused as well. So there is a command to route the cursors all back together and that I sent, well actually I didn't send that one to you. Okay, I'll go back to this in a second but um, I'll send it to you. Insert plus number pad minus. So you would push the insert key and then the minus on the number pad. You can't do it on the laptop because there's no number pad on the laptop. It has to be on the keyboard. These are um, basic QWERTY keyboard commands that I've set up for JAWS on here. Bruce, Bruce and I did it, and you don't know Bruce, but I do. Um, and so it, it's all set up for a desktop type QWERTY keyboard. So if it gets confusing and it's not reading the letters, try that first. If that's not working, then you probably need to shut it down because um, it's kind of like you need to reboot the system again. Most of the time I don't have to reboot, but sometimes I do. So, okay, now we're on the desktop and when Brandon hears that, he knows to push his key commands, which I have written here, all the key commands that he knows that I've taught him so far. Um, and they're for you guys. I did email you this list and the list is going to change. So what I'm gonna do, these are actually handwritten notes that I kept last year and uh, had up on the board, but um, I'm gonna put them all on a computer and when I add a new one, I'll just send you a new updated version and, and I'll put like uh, version number seven. And so if you have version six, you know that there's gonna be another version, you need to print that one out or keep it wherever you like to keep it so that you can refer to it to help him if he forgets a key command, because sometimes he does. Okay, so. He knows this is ready, and what he does is using his JAWS, he's going to use hotkey commands to be able to get through and navigate the desktop. And everything that I have for him is on the desktop. I started with only the desktop, and the reason that I did it is because it's easy for me to see while he is navigating so I can teach him better. Um, so he pushes Windows D and it should route the cursor to the desktop and it should say desktop. If it says Windows D, there's a problem. The cursor is not in the right place. And if that happens, all you do is push the Windows key one time, lift your hand, wait a second, push the Windows key again, and it's gonna put the cursor in a uh, rerouted position. Then you just push Windows D and it will say desktop. Okay, so here we go. We are going to have him find a document called spelling. And so we're going to put the cursor on the desktop. Once he has heard the word desktop, he knows that his cursor is on the desktop. He doesn't have to keep listening to the rest of the words on that. And there's a con the control button by itself is the quiet key. Now he and I have a secret, but I'll tell you what it is. He and I sometimes say the shut up key, but that's only between him and I, because it's not polite in the classroom to say shut up. So it's a joke between us. But for the rest of the world, it's the quiet key, okay? So now the cursor is on the desktop and he can navigate through the desktop with the arrow keys, but it's slow. So what I do is, um, 
when we save a document that I want him to find, I, I let him know what the title, like if it's called spelling, it starts with a S, right? So he knows to push S and it's gonna uh, filter through all the S documents on the desktop. So let's listen. Sample job application form. And I say to Brandon, is that the one? And he says, no, Miss Kathy. Hang on, let me turn up the volume here real quick. Okay. Folder new list view, sample job application form, 27 of 30, the move to... We're gonna make it be quiet, okay. So now we're gonna push S again, and it's gonna take us to another document. S, folder new list view, spelling, 28 of 30, the and move to items, use the arrow keys. There it is. The the selected. Let's push the quiet key. He knows it's there. Now he knows to push enter because the cursor has selected it. Enter. And there it is. It's going to open oh, up and it's the word. spelling document. Okay. So I often ask oh, him. Okay. I often ask him, where's your cursor? And he always tells me when it opens up, it's at the top, but sometimes it's not. So I have him determine if it's at the top. And if, if he doesn't want to determine if it's at the top, all he has to do is push page up, which is this key over on the far right. I um, put a tactile indicator on this one instead of putting page up on it. Um, so he just pushes it. Page up. And if the cursor wasn't at the top, it puts it at the very top. If he ever gets lost in a document, he can push page up and it'll take the cursor to the top. And that's a good one for you guys to know too. That's listed in the, uh, the email that I sent you. So now the cursor is on the top and I'll say, Brandon, I want you to find the line that says apples and all car cat. That line does not make sense. I'm not sure why uh, the sentences are all messed up. It could be because he got in here during free time and he kind of changed his sentences. Uh, sometimes he does that, which is fine. Um, at least for this document. So we're going to go to Apple and all car. That one's not it. I'll say, Brandon, is that it? And it'll no. Apple and all car cat is a ball bed. Yeah. Blue boy plus candy. That's the one. Okay. So I'll say, Brandon, you need to fix this because um, Ben and Big are um, smashed up as one word. You need um, a space between bed and big. Now, he has different ways to navigate his cursor through that line. He can go one word at a time, or he can go one letter at a time. If he goes one letter at a time, all he has to do is just hit the right and left arrow key. Now, if he hasn't practiced for a while, sometimes he forgets this and he pushes the up down arrow key because he knows that's how he can make a new line. Um, and then I have to remind him when you're reading and moving across on the line, either use your right arrow or your left arrow, depending on where your cursor is. And you can determine where your cursor is by just pushing that key too. It's harder, in my opinion, to do this. Okay, so between bed and big is where you would put the cursor. However, that one's hard. It's harder to determine where you are, but sometimes you need to go one letter at a time. Um, if you want to go one word at a time, which is also in here, you just push insert key plus the arrow key, and it will read each word in the line. Okay, so now if you hadn't put the, um, it might say ball bed if we, let's see if it does. Space. L -L -A -B -A. Because it probably will think it's a compound word. Mount. Yeah, it, it sounded it out the way um, it would sound, I guess, if it was a real word. So then he would have to be able, I'd say, Brandon, go to the end of the second L and make a space. A -L -L. Space. Oh, sometimes space. this happens B. too. Sometimes you can't tell when it reads the, uh, the curse, the letter, if the cursor is at the beginning of the L or the end of the L. Um, Sometimes I tell him because there's so much, but there is a way to navigate that, but it, it's so confusing that I want to work on that during um, our lessons. And once we get it, then I can let you guys know how we're going to do it. But let me let me deal with that a little Space. bit. For right now, just audit, you tell him auditorily, oh, Brandon, you put your cursor before the L instead of the end of the L. So then he puts a space. Um, he can read the whole document. The whole document from where the cursor is by using insert down arrow. 
And of course it didn't work because it doesn't like to listen to me. So it went one, one letter at a time. Let me make sure I got the um, command right though. That might be one line. Um, read all. No, I got it right. Insert down arrow key. Yeah, sometimes it won't read the whole thing. If that happens, he can still read the whole document. Just have him move the cursor down with the arrow key. Or you can use the insert key. Chicken, cup, cow, dog, zoo, Ilias, yellow, with, with, wills, big room, with, 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 period, big room, with, 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 period, faster, faster. Faster, faster. <laughs> okay. Faster. All right, so right now the cursor doesn't want to go back to the top. Um, if it if it isn't running, like I said, like right now it's not running like um, it should have, there's two problems that could be going on. This document has been changed and written on hundreds of times because he uses it to kind of goof around on, um, which is good. I just want to play in with the, the system. Um, what I'm going to do when I'm done here is I'm going to take this document off completely. In fact, I can do it right now. Um, take the document off completely and um, just make a new spelling, a new, a new spelling document that's fresh and doesn't have so many commands that, that have already been put into it and some of that will stop. Um, at least let's hope so. And then sometimes it's because the cursors have been rerouted and we can push the uh, insert reroute key that I taught you at the beginning, which is the plus. Um, so let me make sure. Insert minus. Yeah, that reroutes it. Okay, so uh, what we want to do when we close a program, as it's supposed to work, um, we go to uh, Alt F4. F4 has a rubber band on it. He knows that one is the F4 key. So Alt, Alt F4. Microsoft F4. Word. Microsoft Word. Save button to activate. Press space bar period. Alt plus S. Space. New edit. Okay, and then it turns off. So it closes the program for Brandon. It, it does give him the, the save or not save option. And if he wants to go to no, don't save, he can just push the arrow key and move over, or tab, to move over to the next box. So now it's closed. And I haven't taught Brandon to delete anything yet. I've just been taking things off. So I will teach him how to delete different documents. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and just delete that document spelling. Desktop, Windows secure, folder view, list view, spelling, 28 of 30, to move the item to use the arrow keys, period. Okay, we're going to use the quiet key. I'm going to check the list. I'm going to see if there's anything that I missed here. You know, there's there's really not. Those are the keys that he's using right now, other than shutting down. I'm going to, Brandon needs to shut down on his own and he needs to open up on his own. Um, there's more than one way to shut down, but the way he knows goes like this. He pushes the Windows key. Menu, search box, edit, type text that is edit field, or press up or down arrow to move through items, period. So he knows if, to find the shutdown with the arrow key. Shutdown, split button, as pop it, When as he hears shutdown, he knows that's it. You push the enter key. Enter, leaving menus. Of course it decided not to do it. Let's try Time. it again. Oh, there it goes. Oh, it, it has some program open in there. Yeah. Oh, and also it's updating too. So sometimes, um, that's another reason sometimes the documents won't work or the jobs won't work if there's a, a, either an update that was just ran or one that's supposed to run. It will kind of run a little bit weird. So anyway, there are more things that I want to teach you, but I, I don't want to put them all in one video. The next video that I'm going to do is um, how to use the job application that I have set up for Brandon. It's very simple and it's very specific. And the other video that I'm gonna put up is him actually using it. So um, if there's questions under the video on the, this uh, program on Google Classroom, there will be a box that says comment. Um, you can just write a comment or a question and just push um, enter and it'll come on and then I'll get the question and then I can answer it. Or if you guys wanna talk between each other on there, you can do the same thing. So it's just like reading a, just kind of like a blog list in, in a way. So um, I am also putting up the information, well, it's kind of silly to put how to get into Google Classroom on Google Classroom, but I'm gonna be giving you the information, I'll probably do it emailed on how to log into my account so that you're able to access all these videos. Okay, bye.